Hey, howdy, hey, friends and neighbors, Scott here, and um, I really want to share something with you, something that I've discovered. Well, not my discovery, but my happening upon it on the internet. It's one of these home remedies for um, peach trees, apple trees, the fruit trees. It's a foliar spray that you can make yourself. It's super simple. It's cheap. It's like pennies, pennies, um, and uh, it's, it's really effective. Uh, so far, it has been. So I, I want to show you how I make it. Um, and all you're going to need is some clippers, a bucket, and a tree that a lot of people consider to be a, a junk tree. This is an eastern red cedar. It's a juniperus cedar. So um, let's take the lid off my bucket and let's make this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to clip off a bunch of these cedar branches here into our bucket until we fill it up. All right, well, that looks pretty full. So the next thing we're gonna do is take this home and fill it with water. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's put the lid on it good and tight so that those uh, essential oils from the wood don't escape into the air. And we'll just let that sit for a few days. Okay, it's been a few days. Our concoction should be done brewing, and uh, we're gonna strain it out, and I'll show you how to make it. Now, it's going to rain today, and it's gonna rain all weekend, so normally I wouldn't spray right now because the rain's just gonna wash it all off. But I already told my Facebook group that I was gonna get this video out this week, so let's do it. <laughs> okay, here's the process. Um, pardon any road noise, I'm probably in the worst spot for that. But you'll need your bucket of stuff, an empty bucket, and an old shirt that you can use to strain out any of the cedar bits. So let's just put that shirt here, and we'll open this up and see what we have. There we go. Now, yep, smells nice and cedary, and uh, yeah, has a little bit of a fermented smell. Now, I had somebody say that they were really looking forward to seeing what I was doing because they they got cedar rust on their apple leaves. And this is made with cedar, so you might think, now wait a minute, won't this carry over any of the cedar rust to your plants? And all I can say is, I haven't had any trouble with that in my experience. I think probably it would have to do with the, the fermentation process and the, the extra uh, yeasts and, and things that are growing in here are probably out competing and uh, maybe being just downright antagonistic to the, the cedar rust and any other uh, leaf loving molds. Hey there chicken. My kids call that froggy chicken. I, I don't know why. Yeah, are you gonna be a, a star on my film? All right, let's pour this in here. And you can see the water's a nice yellowy color from <laughs> whatever used to be in there. All right, next step. So now we can we can put the lid on that and we can store it for a while. I don't know how long it stays good, but um, I've sprayed mine once or twice a week and I get about three, three uh, applications out of this. So, I mean, it's good for at least a week and a half or maybe up to two or three weeks, it seems to be. Although you may need to restrain it if it grows more boogers on top. So we'll just pour this into a little hand pump type sprayer. Okay, we've got it in a hand pump sprayer. Let's go out and look at the trees. Here you can see the little rust spots on one of my apple trees. And this tree always gets these spots. But I think that this year there are less of them and the tree is certainly doing better. It's healthier. The fruit's moving along uh, better than it has in previous years because I've really gone from a, a minimalist up approach to seeing how, how little do I really have to put on a tree for it to grow. So 
so far I'm, I'm okay with this. There are leaves that are completely untouched, which doesn't really happen in the previous years. And uh, even the ones that are affected, it, it seems to be okay. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at my other apple tree, too. Now, this tree doesn't ever really suffer from the rust. It's resistant to it. Uh, I will get some leaves. I mean, it'll get some spots, like right here. But mostly, it's not, not really affected by it. And I've been spraying it. And uh, is it less than previous years? I think so. I wish I'd made better notes about that. It's certainly not any worse. So from my own experience, um, this spray from the cedar branches has not brought any of the cedar rust to the apple trees. That's my experience. Uh, of course, I'm just one person. Now here we have, um, I forget the name of exactly what this is, but it's a, I think it's a type of fungus that affects the leaves and causes these unusual growths. And this is the, I think the epicenter this year of where this is taking over. And this, this can't get really bad. It doesn't kill the tree, but then the tree has to regrow its leaves. And so it's not putting that energy in the fruit. But the spray has been real effective here. This was the worst spot. And now it's really my only remaining spot of this stuff. It's cleared up everywhere else. And this was the really affected area. A lot of the affected leaves are just gone. You can see where I've sprayed it before where it's black, where it's just killed it. Now at the edges, it, at the edges, it started to come back, but um, I just keep continuing to spray it and it, it knocks it back every time. The fruit here is not as healthy either. Ugh, hey, sticky fruit. Now we've had a couple of late season hails that kind of surprised us and it has nicked up the fruit. And the little fruits here have had a harder time recovering, but I'll show you in another healthier spot where they have come back and they don't have the same marks, so we're gonna keep taking care of this. But it's been, it's been very effective with this. I just have to keep spraying it. Okay, here we are just six or eight feet away from that last shot, and we don't have any of that fungus affecting the leaves. Um, there may have been some right here that's died out from the spray, so that's why there's the holes. But everything is much, much healthier. There is, see this is leaf damage from the hail, and that one may be having a little trouble recovering from it because the hails, the hails, they were real, they were rough. Um, I had seen one before where it, it was healing over though. I guess I don't have that, well I'm sure this is out of shot, but there's one up here. Let me see if I can look up here. Okay, this one you can just see it, where it took a nick and it's, it's healing over. So that will always have a spot, as it grows that won't go away, but it is, it is recovering from that injury. So this is a healthier tree. Those are the remnants of a webworm nest. Now webworms are fun to watch, and I really, I really hate getting rid of them because I think they're pretty cute. <laughs> but they were eating up the leaves on my trees. And you know, the trees would survive, but the energy that they would use up to grow new leaves uh, would mean that they weren't using that energy to make mature fruit. And I planted the tree for the fruit. So I gave them a spray, and from what I hear, webworms can be difficult to take care of because they have that you know, that web, that cocoon thing around the colony that protects them. But one application of this stuff, and they were gone, I mean, instantly. So if you've got webworm troubles, it works really well for that. Oh, goodness. I forgot the... Okay, I forgot something. There are only three ingredients, and I forgot one. There's water, there's cedar branches, and soap. Um, you can use this blue soap or a, a Dawn type of soap, or any, any soap that you feel comfortable with. Uh, it doesn't have to be a certain brand. It just has to be a soap. It's a surfactant. You know, while we're talking about this, let me tell you why I think the spray works, okay? It's got three things going for it, as far as I can tell. One is the soap itself. Soap is a surfactant or surface reactive agent. Uh, that means that it lowers the surface tension of water allowing it to slip into tighter little nooks and crannies and spaces. In effect, it makes water wetter. And what that does is, uh, when you spray it on an insect, it allows it to get into the little joints and the little pieces of their, their carapace, their exoskeleton, really messes them up. Um, so this is non-selective, by the way, so don't spray it on a flowering tree, because it'll knock out your pollinators, your bees and butterflies, and we don't want that, right? You can spray it before they bloom, or you can spray it, uh, spray it well after, but you don't want to knock out the good guy bugs. So that's part one. Part two is the pine extract itself. There's a lot of volatile oils, essential oils in that. And essential oils tends to have antimicrobial properties. 
Um, so they're good at knocking out fungi and bacteria. And um, they also tend to have insect repelling properties uh, sometimes, not all the times, because you can also use some to attract, like uh, honeybees, you can use some um, to attract them into hives. But I, the, the cedar essential oils tend to have more repelling properties. So I think that's going for it. The third thing is, remember I said it had that fermented smell? I think that's key because all of the, the different bacteria are probably fungi, the, the, the yeasty things that are growing in there. Um, I think that when you spray that on here, it's not the same as what's attacking the tree and so it, it creates competition uh, so that the, uh, the stuff you spray can't live on the leaves, but while it's there, it's getting in the way of the other things that are attacking your leaf and attacking your fruit. And it, it just, it messes up their day where they can't do the things they need to. And the things you spray on them, they may be actively antagonistic. They may be trying to chew up and eat the things that are on the leaves too. I don't know specifically, you know, which, which little microbes you have in your bucket, but that's what's working for me. And um, it doesn't seem to be spreading anything from the cedar tree onto my other plants, which, you know, was a little bit of a concern, but they're, they're at least at the same place they would be if I hadn't been spraying, and really, I think they're a little better off. So, anyway, I'm going to put a couple of squirts of this, about two squirts, into that, and then we'll get back to spraying again. I'll spray you good, you little buggers. That's my bad area. Yeah, I'll soak you down. <laughs> That'll teach you. That'll teach you good. Now you notice I'm not wearing a mask because it's basically just soap and cedar water. There are some things that fermented in here, but it's nothing that I wouldn't be exposed to in the environment already. And um, I mean, there's no, I was gonna say there's no synthetic chemicals, but there is that blue soap and I, I don't think the soap comes out naturally that bright blue, right? But um, there's basically, basically no synthetic chemicals in here. Um, so, I'm not, I don't have the same concerns as I would with a synthetic pesticide or, or fungicide. Um, all right, I'm not going to move the camera around with me every time I go through here, so I, I'm going to go through and, and just spray, and then I want to catch up with you with one particular anomaly that I'm looking at. Okay, so is this spray safe for all plants? That's a really good question, and I don't have a perfect answer. I've sprayed it on a lot of things, and so far everything seems okay except for one anomaly. This is a mulberry that I planted, and I haven't sprayed all the mulberries because I usually don't have any trouble with the mulberries. They're fine, and they're not old enough to make fruit anyway, so it doesn't matter if they lose a few leaves. This mulberry is right in between, it's real close to these two peaches, so it's getting some, some drifted spray, and it has these brown dead spots on the middle of the leaves. Now was it from the spray? And it has a weird, this one's curling, and this one's curling. Was it from the spray? I'm not 100% sure. I have a suspicion that it might have been, of course. So I'm going to do a little test. And it, I mean, it kind of looks like, you know, the spray drifting down, touching different places. That, that could have had an effect. So I've gone ahead and today I've sprayed another mulberry tree, um, just part of the tree, with some of the spray. And we're going to see if it has any of these same symptoms uh, or if this is going to end up being something different. But like I say, so far I haven't really had any trouble with the leaves in the mulberry trees. They've always been very healthy. So we'll find out and I'll be sure to update you either in another video or in the, the comments or description for this video. I swear that is the same truck that went by before. This road is never busy except when I'm making a video. I can summon cars. Okay so summary. It's just water, cedar branches, and two little squirt squirts of soap and spray it on stuff. It seems to be safe for most of my plants. We're gonna check out that mulberry. It's been really effective on webworms and stuff that bothers my peaches. We're gonna test it on June bugs when it gets to that time of year, and last year we had a plague of June bugs, so I'm gonna have plenty to test it on. Also, my kids are screaming, but they're fine. They're just throwing a fit, and uh, on apples, I think that it's effective, but I'm going to keep watching it. Also on pears, I didn't show you the pears, but they're they're kind of the same. They get that, um, um, I don't know if they've really officially had fire blight or not, because that's pretty serious stuff, but they've had, they've had some trouble with some stuff. Uh, but I'm going to, I'll keep them sprayed, and as I learn more, I'll let you know. I just really wanted to share this with you, because it's so cool, and it's been, it has been so effective. And, um, 
yeah, I, I hope that you'll give it a try. I hope that it'll be just as effective for you. And until next time, keep your eyes out for plants and zombies and cars that you summon when you turn cameras on. See ya. I'm gonna go check on these screaming kids.